My son, attend to my words. 20th verse. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they, referring to my words, they, my words, are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. My words are health to all their flesh. So you could sort of say it this way, words of life, words of health. Hallelujah, amen? And it's all in his word, glory to God. And so we notice that he said, attend unto my words. That means give his word undivided attention. Everything else out, his word in. Then he said, incline the ear to my sins. That means drink it in through the ear gate. That means open your ears to God's sayings. And if you open your ears to God's sayings, then you have to close them to all other sayings. And then it means that you're to look as well as listen. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Now what not depart from thine eyes? My words. Just keep looking at those words. Keep them, where? In the midst of thine heart. Why? Praise God for their life. Words of life. Words of life. They are life to those that find them, words of health, words of healing. Glory to God. Words that uh, act like medicine. The margin said my words are medicine. To all, all your flesh. Amen? Well, we're just taking uh, this one statement and using it more or less as a main theme, incline your ear, Un incline thine ear unto my sayings. So we're doing that. We're looking to see what Jesus said along this line. Not everything he said, you wouldn't have time. But some of the most important things that he had to say. For instance, we look there into the 15th chapter of Matthew and we read the 21st through the 28th verse but we found out among other things that Jesus said that healing is the children's bread. Well, incline your ear unto that. Amen. That belongs to you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Say it out loud again, everybody. Healing is the children's bread. Say it again. Say it again. Then healing's my bread. Now, some folks need to say that long enough till it registers on the inside of them. You know, if, if, if it's just all up here, it won't work for you. Amen? But it's when it gets here on the inside of you. Amen. So healing is the children's bread, Jesus said. Then healing is our family right because we're children of God. We're in the family of God. It belongs to us. Healing is our gospel right because healing is a part and parcel of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Healing is our legal right because the New Testament, praise God, is a legal document sealed by the blood of Jesus, belongs to us. Healing is our redemptive right, praise God, because it is in God's redemptive plan. He himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Healing is our needful right because we need it and God's provided it. Healing is our prayer right because he said what things have you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, you'll have them. And healing is our divine right, praise God, because it belongs to us. Our, our divine heavenly Father has provided divine healing for our mortal bodies, praise God. And healing is our table right, for he prepareth a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Amen. Now well, you could preach the rest of the year on that nearly, could just pick up them one by one. Amen. And and uh, uh, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. You're there in the 15th chapter of Matthew. Turn back to the 8th chapter. 
Turn back to the 8th chapter of Matthew. And while we're doing that, I'll remind you that uh, made the announcement yesterday, but that David Horton is going to start a tent meeting tonight over in the northeast corner of North Peoria and 36th Street, time 7.30. Be there September the 20th. That's starting tonight through the 29th of September. Every night you're invited to come. David's taught a lot of times here. Far. In fact, he used to be one of our regular teachers here all the time. And so uh, you'll be blessed. I told him when he's talking about it, I'm going to tell, I said, I'm going to tell everybody, go out and hear the wild men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. He get a little wild sometimes. But I think nearly all of us do, don't we? I mean, you get, you get thrilled. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> all right. Turn back to the eighth chapter of Matthew and let's look a little bit further. Remember now, our, our main theme, incline thine ear. Incline thine ear. Well, I, I know, the Brother Hagin, you read that scripture, but you know, I don't believe it just that way. See, you're not inclining the ear to what God said. You're inclining your ear to your beliefs. That's right. Well, one fellow said to me, I got as much, much right, right to my beliefs as you have. I said, no, you don't. No, neither one of us have any right to our beliefs. We do have a right to believe the Bible the Word of God, but we do not have a right to our beliefs. Incline your ear. Oh, well, I've heard all that before. Well, you're not inclining your ear. He didn't say that the Word of God would work for you by having inclined your ear, but incline your ear, present tense. It's, it has to be a, 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 an ongoing thing, continuous action, inclining. Amen? Amen. I said, amen. amen. Now, they wouldn't anybody, for instance, we'll just take for this, because this text said here, my words are help to all their flesh. And if uh, my, my Bible now, my King James Bible, Cambridge Bible says over in the margin that the Hebrew says my words are medicine to all their flesh. Well, we'll take, uh, you know, last year perhaps if you had some kind of a virus or infection or something and you went to the doctor and he gave you medicine, you know, uh, for that infection, uh, some kind of penicillin or something. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. But we'll just say that. And, and so this year, now you got another infection. Of, doctor said, well, now, now you need uh, this, this. Oh, no, I had that last year. But what you had last year ain't going to do you a bit of good this year. Oh, that's good. That's good. Amen. Yeah. So his words are medicine. Yeah. You see, it does us no good to say, well, I heard that. I, I've heard that. No, for medicine do you any good, you have to stay on it. You have to keep, keep taking it. That's right. Amen. That's, right. that's the reason he said, incline your ear, incline your ear. And he didn't say, having inclined your ear, or you're going to incline your ear, but present tense. And again, I'll reemphasize uh, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing. It doesn't come by having heard. It has to be a continuous thing. All right, let's read here from Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 4. When he, that is Jesus now, was come down from the mountain, that's from the mount where he preached the sermon on the mount, great multitudes followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Now incline your ear to his sayings. Touched him, saying, touched him, saying, incline your ear to his sayings, or my sayings, God said. Well, what Jesus said is God saying it because he said the words that I speak unto you, they're not my own, they're my father's. Amen. Saying, what did he say? I will. Hallelujah. Be thou clean. Now, read through the four Gospels carefully. Underline everything he said. You never find one single time where he ever said, I won't. Not once. Not even once. Not even once. I will. Be thou clean. Now, notice this, that the leper believed that God could, but he questioned God's will. 
He said, if thou wilt, or will, the way we talk today, and, and, and if you will, you can make me clean. So he believed he could. Amen? But he questioned his will. Many today follow the unbelieving theory of the leper more than they do the plain teaching of Christ. Because Christ settled the issue about his will, that's where he was doubting. He said, if you will, you can make me clean or whole. Jesus said, I will. Then God said, I will. Praise God, be thy clean. Now, if he ever said, I will to one, then he's saying, I will to all. For he's no respecter of persons right. when it comes to his gifts. He's no respecter of persons on anything. He calls some people to the ministry, but that's not being a respecter of person. That's just putting a vector load on you to <laughs> obey God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So then, it's sad that men would rather follow the doubting of the leper than they would the faith of Jesus. Jesus said, I will. Now, you read a little further in this same, well, we read the fourth uh, uh, verse. Let's, let's notice here the fifth verse of this same opening. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith, or said in other words. Well, here he is saying again. He said, incline your ear to my sayings. Saith, I will come and heal him. Hallelujah. Jesus never did say, I won't. Never did say, I won't. And he never will say that to those who believe him and who have faith. You'll notice as you go on reading here that the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shalt just come under my roof. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority having soldiers under me and I say to this man, go and he goeth and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Now, did you ever stop thinking about it? He, he calls this great faith. Great faith, doesn't he? What, what is the ingredient of great faith after all? It's found right here. Just faith in his word. He said, just speak the word only. You don't have to come to my house. I've got faith in your word. My faith's in, in your word and in your authority. Just speak the word only. That's all you got to do. Just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I've not found so great faith. And as you read a little further, he told the man, go thy way, you know, and be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And of course, his servant was healed in the self same hour. Praise God forevermore. Now then, while you're here, in this same eighth chapter, my, this is a good chapter, isn't it, to preach healing out of. Praise God. Just stay here all day. Look down there into that 17th verse that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, so that's Isaiah the prophet, saying, 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 saying. Remember our theme is, incline the ear to my sayings. That's what he said way back there in Proverbs, didn't he? God said, my son, attend to my words, incline the ear to my sayings. Well, the words that I speak unto you, Jesus said, they're the words of Jesus, uh, are the words of the Father. If you want to hear God speaking, listen to Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, what does God's word say? Incline your ear to my words. Listen to Jesus. Listen to the word of God. Well, that it might be fulfilled that which is spoken by Isaiah saying. Here's what Isaiah said. By the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God, by the word of God. The word of God. Saying what? What does God's word say? Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Well, yeah, that's in there all right, but, well, I can't find a but in that scripture. Why do you want to put one in there for? <laughs> Amen? 
Now let's back up here just a little bit and read and we'll get even more out of it. In that 13th verse that I referred to when Jesus said, saith unto him that is said unto the centurion, go thy way and as thou hast believed, so it be it done unto thee. I believe he's saying that to all of us today. Go thy way and as thou hast believed, so it be it done unto you. Praise God. Just go on. And as you believe, so be it done to you. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Now verse 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now there's a lot of truth, a lot of truths, you might say, and nuggets of truth that we could uh, expound on here. But uh, I, I think that one great truth that we can see that sort of shines out above all the rest of them is that some folks, because they believe that, that it is God's will to heal some, you know, but not God's will to heal all, that uh, he just got through healing Peter's mother-in-law. See? And so I, I think the reason the Word of God connects this with him healing the mass right next, the mass is next, is so that you know that healing isn't just for a favored few or somebody special like the mother-in-law of an apostle, you see. Amen? Amen? So that same day, that same day, because it was a Sabbath, that same day that Peter's mother-in-law was healed, at evening, that is, at, uh, after six o'clock in the evening, at evening, when the evening was come, that is, when six o'clock came, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and he healed all that were sick. That is all in that crowd that were sick. Why did he do it? Let's listen to the sayings of God's word. That it might be fulfilled as was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Like I said, I believe thoroughly that that's put right in there, right next to him healing. You see, we see him healing uh, the Peter's mother-in-law. But like I said, somebody say, well, yeah, but now she was the uh, mother-in-law, one of the apostles, you know. But it didn't say himself took Peter's mother-in-law's infirmities and bare Peter's mother-in-law's sicknesses. <laughs> Amen. Or someone might say, if you back up to the first part of the chapter, the, the, the leper there who, who believed that he could and doubted her that he will or not. Well, yeah, that was just sort of an isolated case. Or the centurion. Well, the leper was a Jew and the centurion, you know, was a Gentile or a Roman. And uh, so God just wanted to prove his power to the Romans, you know, so, so they know his authority, you know. That's the way some people interpret it. But you see, so you wouldn't get carried away on that, he sums it all up by saying himself took our. Not the lepers. Not just the centurion's servant's palsy. Not just Peter's mother-in-law's sickness and fever. Himself took our uh, infirmities and bear our sicknesses. And it's on that basis that he healed all in that multitude that was sick. Hallelujah. Incline your ear. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. The Bible contains God's sayings. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, Jesus is the, I like to put it this way, the, the will of God in action. What is God's will? Is it God's will to heal me? Well, here's where we fail so many times if you deal with sick people. I have been in the healing ministry for 50 years now, actually 51 years. 
And you'll always find out that the biggest majority of the time where the hang-up is, is concerning the will of God. Even though people may make some effort, some, many times that thought is lurking in the back of their head, so to speak. Well, it might not be God's will to heal me. Well, I know God does heal. But you see, those folks have not and are not inclining their ear to God's sayings. When you incline your ear to what God says, you know. So Jesus, I like to put it this way, he said, I came not, I did not come to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Then is he carrying out the will of God? Look, at, look again, we look at it many, many times. But like I say all the time, just because I've had one T-bone steak doesn't mean I'm not going to eat another. In fact, I'm planning on eating one tonight. <laughs> I don't look at it and say, well, I've had one of them. No, friend, it's continually feeding your body that keeps it strong. Amen? It's continually feeding your spirit. Amen? Hallelujah, that keeps it strong. Keeps your faith up. Feed along the line of divine healing. You're building, you're building healing and health into your body, into your flesh, because they, my words, are, are health to all their flesh. Well, Acts 10, 38, you're familiar with it. How God. Now, remember, with this thought in mind, incline your ear to my sins. Remember this thought in mind. I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me, Jesus said. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Wonder if he was doing the will of God when he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Wonder if he was carrying out the will of God on the earth. Amen? I believe he was, don't you? I said, I believe he was, don't you? I believe he was, don't you? Well, if he was carrying out the will of God on the earth, then has God's will changed? No, no. See, see, that verse enough is enough to, alone is enough to convince us it's God's will to heal today. Now, here's another angle. Let's look at it from this standpoint. You've got your Bibles there. Turn over to, to the book of Hebrews. I quote these verses so many times, and I don't know, maybe I make a mistake by doing so. You read them and write them, mark them, praise God, and let them register on your consciousness, inner consciousness. Now, look at Hebrews, the very first chapter and the very first uh, verse. God, everybody say God. God. Now we know, you see, that is God our Father because we've been born again. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. <laughs> Amen. Now, the, the, then, then Jesus is God speaking unto us then, isn't he? Huh? Isn't that right? Jesus is God speaking unto us. I wonder what he's saying. When he went about doing good and healing all that was pressed of the devil, wonder what he was saying. It's God's will to heal a few, not God's will to heal everybody. No, that would, no. Wonder what he was saying. God was trying to reveal to man and say to them that I am the kind, loving, heavenly Father. Wonder what he was saying when, when he speak, spoke to us by Jesus. We looked at it, you know, there in the seventh chapter of Matthew when he said, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more would your Father which is in heaven give good things unto them that I... What, what he was saying? He's saying just like you as a father, love your children, desire the best for them, give good things to them. So I, the heavenly Father, praise God, love my children just as much and more. How much more? How much more? How much more? How much more? Yes. Hallelujah. 
How many of you folks, if your children, your little child was burning up with fever, would heal it if you, if you could? You would make it well? Thank God God can. But why don't God do it anyhow? Well, he's not the one in authority there. You're the one in authority, and if you would believe him, take his word, then you'd permit him to do it. God can only do what he's permitted to do. Oh, God's omnipotent, though. He can do anything he wants to do. No, he can't. If he could, he'd make you shut up sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Oh, no, God's all-powerful, omnipotent, do anything you want to do. No, he can't, because if he could, he'd make you pay your tithes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, somebody told me nobody in Oklahoma would be that stupid, of course. Don't y'all tell anybody but a fellow down in Texas told me personally. Oh, he said, this was back there in, in, during World War II, you know. Oh, he said, I don't, I don't believe in it to me personally. Of I mean, course, I'd said something after, sir, come up and told me, I want to tell you something. I said, well, tell you, I want you to know I don't believe in that tithe-paying business. I said, neither does Hitler, <laughs> Mussolini, Mr. Stalin, or the devil. And that's awful bad company to be in with. He looked at me like I'd slapped him in the face with a wet dish rag. <laughs> Blinked his eyes like a toad frog in a West Texas hailstorm. <laughs> Sputtered a time or two and said, yeah, I guess that's right, ain't it? And walked off. <laughs> Amen. That is bad company to be in with, isn't it? <laughs> huh? Amen. I said, amen. amen. How come me to get off on that? Well, it's so anyway, praise God. Amen, amen. Yeah, you see, what, what we got off on was there, well, if it's God's will, if it's God's will, he'll do it. You know, if it's God's will to heal me, he'll do it. And he didn't do it, so it must not be his will. Well, you see, God or Jesus is not the one that's in authority in your house. You are. See, the body is the house you live in. And you're the one that has authority over that house. I don't have authority over it. You do. You can let God in or you can let the devil in. And in your home, you're the one that's in authority. Whoever's the head of the house, praise God, is one that's authority. And you have authority. That's the reason you can believe for your children as long as they're small. As soon as they get up big and grown, married, got a house of their own, then they're the one over their house. Your mother and father don't have authority over that. That's the reason he said that God ordained that from the beginning. You know how much trouble we'd say, you mind me taking another little side journey here? Sometimes these side journey helps as much as the main line does. <laughs> but if folks just listen to the Bible, think about how much trouble, nearly all the trouble in this world is brought on by humans themselves <laughs> in cooperation with the devil, of course, usually. And all, nearly all the tears that are shed are selfish. If folks would just do what the Bible said, all they got to do, just do what the Bible said, it'd save them so much misery. Amen. Now you turn back to the beginning and see just what God said. Genesis is the book of beginnings. You know that, don't you? You know that, don't you? Yes. All right, you turn back to the second chapter of Genesis and see how how God, what God has to say. Now notice here that in this second chapter of Genesis, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them and so on and so forth. And then the fourth verse, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. Then the eighth verse, the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, so on. And then the, the uh, Bible tells us that it is not good in this 18th verse, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowls there, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. 
the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his rib and closed up the flesh thereof, instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now here's the one I want you to get to. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. That'd solve that mother-in-law problem a lot of times. Therefore shall a man leave, and that means a woman too. She leaves her father and mother. And cleave, cleave. You know what cleave means? Well, look it up. Don't let, don't let me have to do all your studying for you. <laughs> Put an old simple English hang on to. Bless God, hold on to. Don't turn loose. Cleave unto his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. Works the same way for the woman. somebody was talking about, and I'm almost ashamed to admit it, anybody ever came to Raymond is that stupid and ignorant? And bless their darling hearts and stupid heads. <laughs> Graduated from Raymond. Right here. Got married, you know. Didn't have enough sense to leave his mom and daddy. Before you know it, you know, in a year or two, the marriage broke up. Actually, he's the one that did it. It wasn't her. She had, she had stayed with him. But he sent her back home, you know. I said, well, I can't understand something. I said, well, in the first place, when you get into disobedience, you've opened the door to the devil. In the first place, he already left his mom and daddy. He oughtn't have stayed with them. I don't mean you can't live in the same town, but I'm talking about staying with them, being under their coattail and under their dominion and domination and authority. Are you listening to me? Yeah. When you disobey God along one line, it makes it real easy to disobey God along another line. You get into disobedience, you open up to the devil. It's just better to listen to what the Bible said. Amen? Amen. Let the Bible be the final authority. Well, I'll go back to this again where we started there, where we left off. And you see, you've got authority in your house and as long as your children are there, they're under your authority. But when they get up grown and get married, and get out on their own, then they have authority over their house. You don't. Spiritually, naturally, or anyway. Too many times people try to, and that's where they get in a mess. But you see, God cannot do any more in your house than you let him do. Because you see, he made man, gave him a will of his own, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will, let him open the door of his heart. And even after you become a Christian, you don't lose your will, your free moral agency. You can incline the ear to God's saying if you want to, or you can close your ears to God's sayings. And so if you'll make it possible, he's saying how much more? If ye be an evil, listen to his sayings. If ye then be an evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your heavenly Father give good things? to his children, no, them that ask him. And remember, that's in faith if you'll read the surrounding verses. Amen? You see, he wants to do it, but he can't do it until you, you give him permission to do so, so to speak, and that is ask him. And then thank God he can, and thank God he will. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus then, the God who at sundry times in divers manners speak unto our forefathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us. He's spoken unto us by his own son. Then Jesus in his ministry was God speaking to us, wasn't he? What's he saying to us? What was he saying here in Acts 10, 38 again when he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil? He's telling us that Satan is the oppressor but that God is the deliverer. Jesus is the deliverer. God anointed him to be the deliverer. Praise God. Jesus is the healer. So then where do these things come from? Mystery, the world says. Uh, the mystery of this and the mystery of that. No mystery at all if you get in the mystery book. Praise God. It'll, 
it, it'll unveil the mystery to you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because you see, the Holy Ghost is the teacher. No mystery at all about it. Satan is the defiler. Satan is the tormentor. Satan is the disease and sickness bearer or the author of it. Very easy and very simple to see that. Go over to the book of Revelation. And when Satan is finally eliminated from human contact, or rather from the earth, the Bible said there'll be nothing that'll hurt or destroy. Amen. So anything that hurts and destroys, where does it come from? Satan must be the source because when he's eliminated, then there isn't anything that hurts or destroys. Jesus said, said, incline the ear to his sayings. The thief is come, John 10, 10, but for to kill, to steal, to destroy. But I'm come. Hallelujah, that you might have life, might have it more abundantly. Praise God. And then sickness or disease comes to someone and they said, well, you know, God may have put this on me now for some purpose. He's got some great mystical, you know, purpose in mind. And folks, bless their hearts, have played right into the hands of the devil and have been robbed of the blessings, the healing, the health that God wanted them to enjoy. God is a healing God. Hallelujah. God wills that you be well. My son, attend to my words. Incline ye unto my sins. Let them not depart from before thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they, my words, are life. Life unto those that find them. My words are health to all their flesh. Must, must be God's will or he wouldn't have given us his word. Yes. Must be God's will. Why, why would it not be God's will then when he tells us? In other words, if healing was not the will of God for all of his children, then God in his word gave us directions how to get out of his will and miss his will. That's, that, that, that'd be correct, wouldn't it? Can you see that? No, incline the ear to my sayings. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, if God wants to do it, why don't he just do it anyway? See, again, people have the wrong picture of God. They have a, 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 a distorted view of the character of God. And if they listen to the word of God, then they'd get the right picture of God. And their view would not be distorted. Incline ear to my sayings. They, my words, are, are, are life. Life to those that find them, and health to all. Now think about that, all their flesh. I read this scripture, I thought about, a, I, I think about every time I talk along this line, I think about an incident happened with my wife and I. We were speaking several years ago in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We spoke on Saturday night to a full gospel businessmen's chapter meeting there. Then on Sunday evening, we began, we had a faith seminar there for, for about a week, I think five days actually. And uh, it's our own seminar. We just used one of the local churches, used their auditorium, put it on herself. But anyway, speaking to begin with to this full gospel businessmen chapter, we sent folks who wanted to be filled with the Spirit to a prayer room, and uh, a different prayer room, and, and said, now you wait there. I'll be in there in just a moment, and my wife and I will come and, and instruct you and pray with you. Well, on the way to that prayer room, a lady stopped us and said, Brother Sister Hagin, may, we, may I speak to you? And I said, well, you'll have to be in a hurry because these folks have been waiting 15, 20 minutes because we went on doing some other things, ministering to the sick and so on. And I said, you'll have to hurry. And so she walked along with us. She just blurted out, said, you know, I'm 47 years old and this is the first new pair of shoes I've ever had on in my life. Well, we both looked at her feet and could see she had on a new pair of shoes. Well, now that could be interpreted a number of different ways. You could think, well, maybe, you know, poor woman has been so poor they couldn't afford shoes. Finally, after 47 years, got enough money to buy a pair of shoes. Or you always wonder, you know, a lot of thoughts flash through your mind. She quickly went on to explain, I was born with a crippled foot and I never had a pair of shoes. That is, you could wear one, one shoe, was, one foot was normal, I could wear a shoe on that, but I never had on a pair of shoes, you see, in my life. Because this crippled foot, the shoe wouldn't fit. You had to have a special shoe for it and then cripple. And so she said, I, uh, 
and, and that leg was shorter than the other, the crippled leg, and, and wasn't as big around as the other one. And, and she said, I, uh, I never, uh, you know, never was out in public and so on and so forth. But she said, somebody gave me a set of your tapes. Then we had those reel-to-reel -reel tapes and, the, and the first those big, uh, big ones. And then at this time, we had that five-inch reel-to-reel. And they gave me a set of them. We called it the Faith Series then. I think they called it Faith Classics now. Uh, and so she said, uh, now I, I was raised up in Pentecostal church, full gospel church. But she said, I, I, you know, nothing to do, set it home. Never out in the public, never worked or anything. And I listened to those tapes, but she said, I couldn't get a thing in the world out of them. I couldn't get a thing. It didn't mean a thing in the world to me. But I listened to all of them, and I listened to them again and again. And I thought about, what if she had quit the third time and said, well, I didn't get anything out of that. No, she said, after six months, now you think about that. After six months, of daily listening to those tapes. You could put it this way, Sauter. After six months of inclining their ears to God's sayings, she said that uh, nobody prayed for him, and I'd been prayed for, see, many times. You know, full gospel church, Pentecostal church. Pray for the sick, and Lord, people are all, every, every evangelist come along would pray for the sick, probably. <laughs> Usually they did in those days. Been anointed all, no telling how many times. The hands laid on her. Nobody this time laid hands on me. Nobody anointed all. Nobody prayed for me. In fact, I didn't even pray myself. <laughs> Did you notice this? You know, of course, prayer is right. Now, don't misunderstand me. You understand not, it might be a little in prayer because the Bible teaches that. You understand that? But go back here to Proverbs for just a minute now. Look at that again. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sins. Let them not depart from before thine eyes. Keep in the midst of thine heart. For their life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh if they pray. No. No, not a word about prayer in there. No. I mean, is there? See, now don't misunderstand me. See, on, on that level, God meets you a prayer a lot of times. And we're, we're not belittling that, speaking against that. But I'm just making a point that not one word said about prayer there that you have to pray to make it work. All you got to do to make it work is just attend to my words, incline your ear to my sin, let them part before your eyes, keep in the midst of thine heart. So she said, six months of solidly listening to those tapes, nothing else to do every day. You're at home 24 hours a day, nothing else to do, but you can listen, see? Listening to those tapes, that foot just grew out and straightened up. That leg just straightened up. See, that word got in there and got to work it. Can you see that? Can you see that? You see, our, our, our problem is a lot of time, we, we've seen God work miracles and do supernatural things, and we're waiting for him to do something like that, and he does, and that works sometimes, but this will work all the time. See? I, I can't guarantee you that there'll be gifts of healings in manifestation today in this service because they are manifested as the Spirit wills. I can't guarantee you that there'll be working of miracles manifested here today because they're manifested according to 1 Corinthians 12, 11 as the Spirit wills. I can't guarantee you that special faith, the gift of special faith, I have it manifested to me sometime, but I can't guarantee you that it'll be manifested here today because 1 Corinthians 12, 11 said that all those nine manifestations of the Spirit are manifested as the Spirit wills. I'll tell you one thing I can guarantee you, that this word will work for you every day. Yes. Glory to God. This word will work for you every day. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now why? Because God stands back of every word spoken here. That's, That's right. what he said, attend to my words. Right. Well, now, what if she had stopped? Just think about what if she had listened for three months and stopped? No, she just kept listening. Wonder if she had stopped after six months, even if she hadn't gotten results. I don't know. But she said after listening six months, without prayer, without anybody knowing it though, that foot just straightened out, became normal. We looked at it as normal. Normal. Just as normal as the other foot. Besides that, she said, at age 46, now see, she's 
past your 47th birthday now. But at age 46, see, that same deformed foot, I was born without a little toe. And at age 46, I grew a little toe on my <laughs> left right. foot. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Someone said, well, I don't believe that. Well, it won't work for you then. Forget it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now then, well, we could look there and see that her feet are normal and she got on a new pair of shoes. We could see that part. We accepted her testimony, but right on the other end, I don't know about you, but I'm a great one to prove things. I, I, I like it. And, and you know, the, the facts of God's word is proof. <laughs> Hallelujah. But right on the other hand, this dear lady spoke up and said, oh, there's someone that you know is good friends of yours that used to be my pastor. And said, Reed, I know I heard you mention their name on those tapes. We said, who? Well, they said, Brother and Sister Goodwin, J.R. Goodwin, who at that time was pastor of the First Assembly of God Church in Pasadena, Texas. Brother Goodwin's alive. Then he's gone to be with the Lord. Sister Goodwin lives here in Tulsa now. And so we said, oh, yes, they're good friends of ours, you know. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Well, in the process of time, we saw the Goodwins, and my wife got the woman's name, and, and, and my wife began to talk to Sister Goodwin about him. And when she said that, immediately Sister Goodwin said, oh, the little cripple girl. When, I, when she was their pastor, they were, she was back in her 30s. And Sister Goodwin was in her 60s, so she's just a girl to her. Amen. Yeah. She said, oh, the little cripple girl. My wife said, well, she's not crippled now. We saw her. She's perfectly healed. Sister Goodwin said, well, she is crippled when we were her pastor. And her mother said that she is born that way. So you see here is irrefutable proof that she was crippled, that, she is, that her testimony is correct. And we saw her foot just as good as the other one. Amen. 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 How did it come about? Now, now, don't misunderstand me at all. I am not speaking against manifestations of the Holy Ghost. You know that. Now, for instance, this, this summer, we were there in Philadelphia again for our third meeting. And, and see, over a two-year period, you know, first year is the first time we're there. And then we're twice since, since, see. Now, when we were there that first time in a meeting, well, there was uh, four ladies sitting over here in a wheelchair. And suddenly the anointing, the Holy Ghost came on me, and the anointing came, and I knew exactly what it was because I've had that manifestation before. It was a manifestation of special faith. The Holy Ghost gave me it at that moment. And I said, pointed to one of these ladies and got her attention, said, you taught me? I said, yeah, you. And then I dropped my hand and I said to her, now I'm going to point at you again, and when I do, the Holy Ghost will come on you. You get up and walk out of that chair. And so I did. She got up and walked out of the chair. Yeah. Now, I could not minister that way to those other three ladies in that chair. Now, why? Because the manifestation of the Spirit is given as the Spirit wills. Mm -hmm. I can minister to them by laying hands on them in faith and them in faith receiving the impartation. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. I said that to you just to illustrate to you, see. That we're not, I'm not speaking, but, but we've seen things like that. And a lot of times we're waiting on them. They may or they may not. I don't know. Man, if it's me, that's the reason God don't put that in your control. We'd do it every service. <laughs> and that might not be his plan right now. But, uh, but you see, the, uh, the uh, word of God will always work. That's the reason we constantly teach and preach the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Trying to get people to incline there. We can guarantee that. Glory to God. Incline the ear unto my sayings. Well, that lady, you see, that lady was not healed. I'm talking about that lady back in Albuquerque now with a crippled foot, born that way, deformed foot and so on, leg, limb, and little toe. She wasn't healed by uh, working of miracles. She wasn't healed by gifts of healings. She wasn't healed by special faith or some ministry because there's nobody there to minister. She's sitting home by herself. But by listening, after six months, she said, that began to get inside me. And that foot just began, didn't just happen like that in a straight up, just gradually began to straighten up. Praise God, become, till it became normal. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. That came about by her inclining her ears to what God said. That's not the only way to be healed, but it's one of the best ways. Amen. Amen. Praise God for everyone, because once you learn that, boy, you, were, you, you, you got there. You, you're a long way down the road. Amen. You found out what God worked for. John Lake said, Dr. John Lake said, I think 
That's his Pentecost, and I concur with him. I think he said a lot of times that our instant healings are a curse to us. People get healed instantly and go away and forget it. Like the nine lepers, only one of them returned to give thanks to the Lord. But when a person is healed gradually, then they learn as I walk by faith, you see, I'm better and better and better and things are working. Then they also learn a great spiritual lesson. Amen? And that works for them the rest of their life. Praise God forevermore. Well, thank God for his word. Incline, everybody say incline. incline. Thine ear, Thine ear. Unto, my unto my sayings. I am, I am. inclining my ears ear. unto, unto God's sayings. For his sayings, for his, sayings. His, words his words are life. Are life. Unto those that find them. Find his, them. Words his words are life, are life. Unto, me. unto me. And his words, and his, words. His, sayings his sayings is health, his health. To, all of my flesh. to all of my flesh. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, walking I'm walking in the word. So I'm walking in life. And I'm walking in health. And I'm, walking in health. I'm, walking in the word. I'm walking in the Word. And the Word is working in me. And that Word produces healing and health. And health. I'm, healed. I'm healed. I'm full of life. I'm, full of life. I'm, healthy. I'm healthy because I'm walking, because I'm walking in, the word. in the Word. And the Word, and the word is working, is working. In, me. in me. You ought to make a song out of that. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, hallelujah. I'll tell you, if we went home now, we'd be blessed, wouldn't we? I, I get thrilled with the Word. Yes. Oh, I get thrilled with the Word. I know what it'll do for you. Yeah, I guess I get more thrilled teaching healing from this standpoint than I do any other. Praise God, even ministering under the Lord. Because see, this is the way I was healed. This is the way I was healed. I know the condition I was in. I know. I never ran and played, you see, for for 17 years, like other little children. Just sit around, you know, and look at other children that would laugh and run, you know, like a charmed bird almost. Never normal, never a normal childhood. Became totally bedfast. I know what it means to lie there, bedfast, 16 long months. That's a long time to be in bed. If you don't believe it, try it sometime. 16 long months. I know what it means to be there and you can't even turn over on your side, they turn you on the sheet. You can't feed yourself, somebody feeds you. You're alive on the inside, but it seems like you're in a, in a cage. Your body is paralyzed. It won't work right. It's, it's, it's a terrible thing. It's, it's impossible to describe almost. I know I've been there. I've been there just staring at the ceiling. I've been there when it's daytime, you wish it was night. When it's nighttime, you wish it was day. I've been there when the doctors have shook their head, five of them said, we can't do anything. I mean, you just have to die. I've been there. In the daytime when the sun shined bright on the outside, but that room seemed to be filled with the darkness of death. Death hung like a, like a gloom over you. I've been there when they said, son, uh, who, who do you want to preach a funeral? What, what songs do you want to sing? I've been there when they said, who, who, who do you want for pallbearers? I've been there. But oh, thank God I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there when the light came shining in. The entrance of his words giveth light. But you see, his words can't find entrance until you incline your ear to his sayings. The entrance of his words giveth light. I've been there. I, I, I knew some way or another I couldn't understand, couldn't figure it out. I got a hold of Mark 11, 24, way back there when I first became bedfast. Didn't know what it meant, didn't know how to work it, but I, I've been there in, in the nighttime and in, in the times when, when you were dying. I just repeated that verse. 
it, it was just words to me then. But, but some way or another, I knew it was there. It's all there. And I just repeated those words. I quoted that verse one night, all night long. No telling, you know, thousands of times. All night long, quoted Mark eleven twenty four. 24. All night long. But finally the light shined through. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I became healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Praise God. Well, yeah, but now, Brother Hagin, God had called you to preach. It didn't work because he had called me to preach. It worked because I inclined my ear to God's sayings. Amen. Amen. Stand up right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's long enough. We could go on and on and on and on and on, but if I went much further, I'd have an East Texas brush arbor spell. Praise God. Almost had one anyway. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. What are we going to sing, Keith? Good, 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 good. 